hard to find dandelions. Right here's the only one so far. But I came out here to find them this morning because I want to go over my dandelions with you. And everything's cold and they're shriveling up. It's so cold because I've seen a bunch of them the other day. But let me pick what I find and then we'll go over this. It's too cold for me to just hang out out here and talk. So let me hunt some of these and we'll get back at it. I ain't got no lies to tell. I gave up on that adventure real quick like these warm spells and then these cold spells. Ugh, they mess with you. So I actually just picked these three and they're shriveled up this morning I guess because it's so cold. I picked this one the other day and that's when I first noticed I was starting to get a lot of dandelions again. And that's why I wanted to do this uh, video because this is a time of year where your dandelions really start coming out and and I, I've said before I really think it's significant uh, in nature and through our creator that dandelions come out when they do because in the winter you know we tend to uh, eat more junk than we should we so so-called hibernate and just sit and indulge more and uh, dandelion is a great herb to use for detoxing your bodies from all those things it's a great diuretic the biggest reasons i use it is because it is a diuretic and it is a detoxing it actually uh, helps your liver um, protects your liver as well and in doing so that helps lower blood pressure and also helps with lowering cholesterol because it's helping getting impurities out of your body and making things function better. It's really high in several different vitamins and minerals. I think it's, um, I know it's got K in it, which is a really good one for your skin. It's got calcium in it, which is really good for your skin and your bones. So therefore, this herb is also good for your help when keeping your bones built up. Um, it's got a lot of vitamin A and C in it, potassium, seems like there ought to be a couple more, but I can't think of it off the top of my head. But um, So this herb's just got a lot of great benefits. There's some things that's not been completely proven with it, but there's others that has. It's loaded in a lot of antioxidants. And the root of it, which whenever I, I harvest it, let me tell you this before I go too far. I don't just harvest the bloom. The bloom is just the thing that shows up first thing in the spring that's good to harvest. Uh, later in the year, when the leaves really start coming out good, I harvest the leaves and I put them in my salad. Sometimes earlier, it just depends on how well the leaves look. And then later in the fall is generally when I do my, I dig up the roots. And the reason being for that is I just want to let them grow and do everything they're going to do throughout the year. And then you know, in the fall, I'll go ahead and take some of the bigger roots. It looks like they're going to be big roots on them. And I make tinctures out of those. And uh, I'm actually taking a tincture right now. And I'll tell you about that in just a second. But I want to tell you about this, this screen. I'll show you what I've got here. And you don't have to do it this way. You can do it anyway. You can do it in a dehydrator or whatever. And our plan is here. I want to make me a big smoker. That's not the size of a, a outhouse. But, you know, about half that size anyway. That I leave outside that I can also use as a dehydrator. And with that, I've been collecting uh, screens. And I'll, I'll probably even cut this one out. If I don't keep this one in the house, I'll cut this one out and make it the size I need it and box it off with some uh, one by two strips or something other to make it fit into my smoker slash dehydrator whenever I get it built. But I, these screens are great. If you have any old screens laying around of any kind, to lay your herbs on so that they can dry out. And this one here is about dehydrated already. But uh, I've already started on taking my... This is all I've got left of my dandelion that I've harvested uh, in the past. As for the petals, this here I use primarily for salves and for teas. I drink teas of this, and I generally try to do that at night so that it can have more time to do its work. But in the morning hours, let me show you what I do. First, I take my tinctured you can see this is dandelion root and I have already put on here to take two to 
five milliliters uh, three three times a day. And I do that in the mornings because I feel like it, it goes in, it protects my liver first thing, uh, and also helps detox things that's settled in the bottom of maybe my stomach, maybe my liver, whatever, that didn't completely digest through the night. That's just my theory on it. So, you know, take that or leave that. And I always keep these, I have these uh, uh, B12 sublingual, and I always keep these little droppers because they're good to use in that. And I just put that in a little bit of water, and I've actually just been taking two milliliters, and um, take it, you know, in the morning, because it, it has got vodka. That's what I use as a, my uh, thing to make my tinctures is with this vodka. So it's got a wang to it, so I just take a little bit of water, that way I can just chug it down real quick and be gone with it and chug down some regular water. Well, there is the duck ducks. They're already growing a lot. The lighter colored one won't have as much to do with me. I don't know, because I don't know nothing about ducks, but just from looking on the internet, trying to figure out what these guys are, I think the little yellow one is a khaki. I think this this bigger one here on the right here, he's one of his own, and I think he's a, I'm afraid I'll say it wrong, C-A-Y-U-G-A. And the other two that look alike, I think they're either Rose or Mallards. So, time will tell, I guess, with that. But they're being sweet. And I really think that one there is a runner duck. Because he'll just stand up really tall. So I'm pretty sure it's a runner. I don't think it was supposed to be a runner, because I don't think they had any runners. But I think he was the, uh, the ugly duckling, but he's the prettiest one, in my opinion. Anyway, I'll hush now. Look over how dirty that is. I'm fixing to clean it here in a little bit. You know, I just cleaned that out yesterday. They are definitely messy critters, for sure. I finally put their water in that thing there so that they could play in it. And I got them a little tub over here that I've been letting them get in and swim in. I put a rock in it so they can get out of it if they wanted to. But anyway, let me get over this for you. The uh, reason I want to... I'm so want to let y'all know about this dandelion is when I worked at Ace Hardware uh, people come in there all the time in the spring and would buy stuff to kill out the dandelions in their yard and that just killed me I just could not stand it it drove me crazy because I'm the crazy my, me and my neighbor in my old house had a funny thing she was from Michigan and uh, when she moved there, I told her, I said, well, if you see me out here in the yard with a basket pulling weeds I, and putting them in my basket, don't think I'm crazy. I says, I just, you know, I collect dandelions and chickweed and different things that, you know, grow around there. And uh, she laughed at me and I says, oh, so she says, oh, so you're the crazy herb lady. I said, yeah, I guess that's what you can call me is the crazy herb lady. But. I really want people to realize what they have. There's such value in a dandelion. We eat the leaves in our salads. They're so detoxing to your body. There's so many different properties in the leaves, in the flowers, and in the roots all. And it's more concentrated, of course, in the root. I like myself to, whenever I told you already about how I do my root and stuff, I like to, to harvest my dandelion, the, the flower, and even the leaves generally, but not always, uh, in the mornings. Because to me, it's like picking greens. And I've not read this anywhere. It just sounds logical to me. Like, I pick my greens and stuff like that early in the morning because that's when, you know, things are, are the strongest concentration in them, the vitamins and stuff like that, before the heat hits them and the, they start flowing through it. Just like sap making, you know. Because when the heat hits the tree, the sap starts flowing. And I just feel like the concentration of all the vitamins and stuff early in the morning before it gets a chance to really get moving around in there and before the sun hits it and starts all that kind of good stuff that it's it's more concentrated. Okay, shut up, Tammy, and read your paper. Okay, what I've wrote down here is I've wrote down it's high in vitamin A, C, and K, which I think I mentioned all those. Um... But also in E and folate, which I didn't mention. And some B vitamins, but it's not real strong in B vitamins. Uh, it has substantial amounts of, of iron and calcium and magnesium and potassium, which is great, guys. Great, great. Think about this. This is a flower in your yard that some people kill. 
Eat that sucker. Make tea out. They make a good tea, by the way. They're just looking at me. I wish you could see them better. Their little eyes just turned up at me like, what is she talking about? Okay. Let me get you a little closer so maybe I have Um, It's rich in, uh, um, uh, it says carbonate in I-N-U-L-I-N, which is actually a fiber, and that is mostly in the root. It does me better sometimes to speak by paper, and sometimes it just does me better to see because some of these words are, I have to figure out, dissect that kind of stuff. But it's what that is, is a fiber that's found in the root. So therefore, you're getting a fiber out of this, which is part of what makes it good for your blood pressure and for your cholesterol and all those things, because we all know that fiber is good for uh, those types of diseases and stuff. Um, let's see. It supports the... It's also been known that it supports healthy bacteria flora in the, in the uh, intestinal tract, which I really believe it does help your intestinal tract because I think it gets things flowing good as well. It also helps with uh, uh, constipation in that aspect. I've never used it for constipation. I think you'd have to use a lot of it to do for constipation because... I can't tell that it does anything major when it comes to that, but um, it's a potent, it's got very potent antioxidants in it, um, which, you know, antioxidants are things that help get rid of free radicals, the negative free radicals in your body. It's also got a lot of beta carotene in it. It reduces inflammation. Uh, I've already mentioned the cholesterol. And your, it decreases low cholesterol and triglycerides. It lowers cholesterol and decreases your triglycerides and reduces blood sugar levels. Some of these things have not totally been proven, but they, they suspect it in mice and stuff like that. Is, but I think they do. They just, that's their disclaimer. And I'll put my disclaimer here. You know, this is my way of saying I use this for this stuff, but... Don't take my word for it, I guess. But anyway, it's a great diuretic. It detoxes the body and protects the liver tissues, which is very, very important is a big reason why I take it. The potassium that is associated, uh, potassium is, is part of what associates it being um, good for lowering your blood pressure because potassium is good for blood pressure. It reduces the fat in your liver, which is awesome thing. Uh, it's potential to prevent the growth of cancerous cells in all kinds of different organs. Uh, the root is high in probiotics, or prebiotics, excuse me, prebiotics. And it's also known to be antimicrobial and antiviral, which would help fight infections and such like that. So I want to suggest everybody, uh, don't walk by those dandelions this year and don't um, think that they're just a weed because oh lord there's such value in them it's unreal and like I said this time of year right now I've started I'm doing my tea at night and sometimes I'll do a tea in the day I'll just make a simple tea out of it I have a tea ball that I use and put those in it you can use the leaves too but I just grab the the, the blooms because I usually use the leaves in my salads and in the evenings, I do my tinctures. And if you want to do a tincture with the root, and you can harvest the roots now, too. I just do it that way for, like I said, giving it time to grow. You can dig up the roots and put them in. You can put them in vinegar, for that matter. If you don't want to go get the liquor or anything like that, you can put them down in vinegar and let them set four to six weeks. The longer you let it set, the more potent it's going to be. And um, if you do do the vinegar, I think I would use, uh, you know, more milligrams than the two milligrams. I'm using two milligrams uh, in the afternoon, so, or in the morning, I'm sorry. And just go by your own. And um, like I said, this is, I'm going to throw out my disclaimer here. I'm not swearing by this stuff. I use it personally, and I see great benefit from it, and I feel very confident in using it myself but I don't want to push it off on somebody and them not know that how I put it out there I don't know what to say about that but I don't know how you even do a disclaimer for that matter but 
There it is. I just don't want to get in trouble. Anyway, God bless you guys. Thank you for watching. Hopefully I'll get my chick chicks I want. Bye, babies. Tell everybody bye-bye. Jabber, jabber. God bless. Hey, there's reason you ain't seeing me. But I want this is my June uh, uh, second ferment I wanted to show you. I've already been drinking out of it, so you can see that. But I put my strawberries in, and then the bottom I've got some candied ginger that I had. And it's actually very flavorful. I was just strained it into my glass like that. So I was wanting to show you that right quick. And I'm going to do my second ferment on my kombucha today. I want to show you something else, and I learned this whenever I worked in the nursing home. I did hair in the nursing home. I would pick them little old women's brains, buddy, and I love doing that to people that's got a lot of wisdom and things that they know. Now, this is the dried one. You can see the difference in the color. I'm not going to use the dried one for this, but when you pick fresh ones of, the, of dandelions, you can make you a batter. This is mm, probably, I didn't measure, it's just like half... Uh, cornmeal and half flour and I'm going to put a little milk in it to make it like batter form and I'm going to coat these like you do okra and uh, you can put a little salt in it if you want to and fry them and uh, some of the little ladies up there told me about that's what they used to do is they fry dandelions and I'll make them here and show it to you there's my tea ball yeah there's my tea ball just unscrews and put your dandelion inside of it and Put it in there. And one day I want to show you what I do with my when I make bulk tea. I'll show you that one day too. One here. And I like to do them better when they're in this form. They're the closed form than I do when they're open. You can do it either way, but I just I don't know. It seems more like a fried okra to me if I do it that way. Let me go and grab this now and show you. Just stick it in your oil. Pause this and I'll get them all in there. Here they are, guys in here and see like i said when i worked at the nursing home you know i talked to them about things i, I just let them know you know how i like to collect herbs and uh realize that there's a lot of foods out there that's growing naturally that we don't have to grow ourselves even and learn this from them and it, they it tastes a lot like okra similar it's got a little bit more of a bitterness to it than okra does but it's pretty cool. I mean, heck, if you're starving to death, try using dandelions. Guys, you can also add stuff like cayenne and different seasonings to this, garlic or whatever, to that batter. It'll help make it even better. Thing, real quick, I wanted to let you know, in case people want to go ahead and start this and you don't have a tea ball or whatever, you can take a coffee filter, put your dried, you know, they don't have to be dried. This is just the way to preserve them. Put your dandelion in here. Get you a piece of string of some sort or something to tie it up. And I'll show you. Okay, I just pulled it all together and tied it up. And put a string on it and put it in your coffee cup. And use it that way. I just don't want people to feel like they're limited because they don't have certain supplies. Because when I first started doing this, this is what I did. You know, and there's nothing wrong with that right there. Make sure your string's long enough because I bet didn't cut mine long enough. And... Make you some tea, guys. It's good for you.